الحق الصادق His word is the sign. Who would have thought at the time when they used to build with pebbles houses that barely had roofs that they would compete in skyscrapers? وَرَبُّ الْكَعْبَ Everything the man has uttered is true. And then comes the big signs when the trumpet is blown. Whatever's in the heavens and earth will be true. As the creation changes, the mountains fly about, the earth is destroyed, buildings come crumbling down. Everything that you know is in utter ruin, and it's the most catastrophic day in the existence of creation. Where are the arrogant ones? Where are the proud ones? Where are the haughty ones? I am the king. Where are the kings of this world? Humankind panic. And the fear is immense. And the heat is unbearable. And the sweat is covering people. And a man who remembers Allah in the seven group of people will be under the shade of Allah. الحمد لله الحمد لله العظيم الخبير الأجل يغفر الذنب ويعف الزلل تنزح يا مولانا عن نقص والعلل جبار قوي لا يكل ولا يمل بسط الأرض بقدرته وأرسى الجبل خلق السماوات والأرض بالحق ولن يتركنا همل والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء وإمام المتقين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهديه إلى يوم الدين وبعد Sheikh Siraj Wahaj spoke about death, a reality which we sometimes forget. I hear a lot of stories of those at the time of death. And being where we are in the community, people come and narrate these stories. And recently, my own younger cousin passed away. And towards the end, they seem to zone out of this life and see another reality. They say, she said, it has come, or he has come. There's no time. And there was another gentleman that passed away in Ramadan, and pious man, and the family have gathered his sick on his deathbed. And he said, make way for the guests. Make way for the guests. And they say, Dad, there's no one. And he said his kalima in past. فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ hadid, Eyes that they piercing like seas beyond the veils that you see. So death comes and there's different endings. May Allah give us a good ending, Ya Rabb. And then you're placed in the grave. فِي ظُلْمَةِ الْقَبْرِ لا أم هناك ولا أب شفيق ولا أخ يؤنسني In the darkness of the grave, lonely and alone, no father here, no kind mother, no benevolent brother, alone in the darkness of the grave. And as the dead lie beneath the soil buried, the living and the land amidst the living, they continue the journey of life. And both the living above the surface and the dead below the surface are moving towards an inevitable day. The day of judgment. And the Quran said 14 and a half centuries ago, that hour has come close. The hour is nigh. Judgment is near. Qala subhana, iqtarabati saatu wan shakka al-qamar. 
the hour has come close, the moon has split. قال سبحانه اقترب للناس حسابهم وهم في غفلة معرضون The reckoning of man has come near They said when is the, when is the hour He said عسى أن يكون قريبا It might be very close And سبحان الله I was reading BBC the news channel Just days before the war in Iraq And a man in America in the restaurant was scaling fish and the fish started to speak it's on BBC it's still there in its history if you look at it and he started to panic and bash the fish like shut up and there was a person standing Jew who understood uh, standing there who understood Hebrew Jew and he says I know what it said the fish he said, the hour is nigh and everyone will be accountable for his own deeds. The hour is close and everyone is accountable for his own deeds. The Rasul said, كَيْفَ أَنْعَمْ وَقَدْ الْتَقَمَ صَاحِبُ الْقَرْنِ الْقَرْنِ وَحَنَا جَبْحَتَهُ وَأَصْغَى سَمْعَهُ يَنْتَظِرُ أَنْ يُؤْمَرْ فَيَنْفُخْ How can I relax? And the owner of the trumpet, the custodian of the trumpet, has lifted it to his mouth. And he has put the focus of his hearing, focused, attentive. When will the Lord decree that I blow the trumpet? And when it comes, it is a sudden event. The hadith state, that a textile worker will have the cloth and scissors and he wants to cut it and the trumpet blows. It's a sudden one. But before its advent, the prophet told us the signs will appear. You know, like you want to travel from here to Bunbury, you go on the road and it says 200 kilometers Bunbury. And then it says 150 kilometers Bunbury. And then it says 100. Bunbury. Fifth, it's supposed to give you an idea of the proximity. So the Rasul gave us signs that when these come to pass, know that the hour is close. And subhanallah, both major signs and minor signs, big signs and small signs, and the, the small signs multiple. In one hadith, amazing hadith, a stranger comes into the gathering of the Rasul. رجل شديد بياض الثياب شديد سواد الشعر لم يرى عليه أثر السفر ولم يعرفه منا أحد A man exclusively white Dark hair No spot or sign of fatigue and travel None of us know him Mysterious man He has come into the gathering of the Rasul And he sits with his knees touching the knees of the Prophet And then he says يا محمد صلى الله على محمد أخبرني عن الإسلام Tell me about Islam So the Prophet answered And when the Prophet finished The man said صدقت You spoke the truth So the Ashab says we are astonished He asks and confirms As though he knows the answer So why are you asking? And then he says فأخبرني عن الإيمان Tell me O Muhammad about Iman The Rasul explained And he says صدقت True. So then he said, "Akhbirni an al ihsan Tell me about ihsan." The Prophet explained. The man said, "Correct." And then he asks, "Fakhbirni an al saha Tell me, O Muhammad, about the hour. So he said, "Mal masoolu anha bi a'lam min al sail." The one you're asking doesn't know more than the one who was asking. The asked doesn't know more than the one asking. So then he says, فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنْ أَمَارَاتِهَا Tell me its signs. أَيْ عَلَامَاتِهَا So he says, and listen, listen, listen to the one who doesn't speak of his own desires. أَنْ تَلِدَ الْأَمَةُ رَبَّتَهَا When a lady gives birth to her master. When a female servant gives birth to her master. 
and you want to see your masters today, look at your children. You live for them. Mobile phone, mom, hadir. This, ala ra'si wa aini. And you do something wrong, khalas not speaking to you for today, mom. Amat u rabbataha. You have given birth to your masters. The Prophet said it for it was unheard of then. They lived in servitude of their parents. And then the second sign in Subhan al Khaliq wa antara hufatan uratan alatan ria ashai yatawaluna fil bunyan. When you see the barely clothed. Like they don't have good clothing, not adequate clothing, barefooted, destitute, shepherds and goat herders competing in the heights of buildings. So I researched who is competing in the heights of buildings, Subhan al Khaliq. The tallest building on earth today, where is it? Dubai. I watched the footage of Sheikh Zaid. You know, ordinary simple clothing, he's wrestling with one of his workers. An ordinary shepherd, the oil camp, Pujur, skyrocketed. And now the tallest building on earth is in their country. When the barefooted destitute will compete in the heights of buildings. So I said, maybe coincidence. A few years before that, the, twin the, uh, the clock tower of Mecca. And now the Saudis have thought, bless their hearts, how can they beat us? Let's make another one. The next building started yesterday. One kilometer in the air. Sadaq al Sadiq. His word is the sign. Who would have thought at the time where they used to build with pebbles houses that barely had roofs that they would compete in skyscrapers? وَرَبُّ الْكَعْبَ Everything the man has uttered is true. And then comes the big signs. The small signs the scholars say is almost done. There's just a few left. Then comes the big signs. How will they come? الأمارات أي علامات خرزات منزومات في سلك فإن يقطع السلك يطبع بعضها بعضا they are like beads on a necklace when it gets cut they will follow one after the other the Dajjal comes after the Dajjal in the year مسيح comes عيسى عليه السلام يا جوج ما جوج كم the sun rises from the west. Khasfum bil mashriq, wa khasfum bil maghrib, wa khasfum fi jazeera til arab. A landslide in the east, a landslide in the west, and one in the Arab peninsula. A fire that will start from Yemen. The major signs is what we're waiting for. And when they pass, when Allah Rabbul Izza wishes and understands, and understand, that no one knows when judgment will come. Qala subhana, inna allaha indahu ilmu sa'a. It is a possessive pronoun. With me alone is the knowledge of the hour. Understand, no one knows when qiyamat will come. No one knows where they're going to die and when they're going to die. You know, they tell me, my grandmother said, when this clock hits here, I will die. And she died. I said, she's lying. No one knows when they're going to die. Coincidence happen. Grandmother say every two days I'm gonna die. <laughs> and once she gets it right, khalas, no, 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 no one knows. So that, uh, and listen to the Bible. Jesus says, of that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels who are on high. Not even I, save God Almighty. No one knows. But when the Amr comes, blow the trumpet. قال سبحانه ويوم يوم ويوم ينفخ في الصور ففزع من في السماوات والأرض إلا ما شاء الله. When the trumpet is blown, whatever's in the heavens and earth will be destroyed. Listen, listen to the descriptions of the Dhul Arsh Al Majid. قال سبحانه يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم. Oh, humankind. 
be mindful of Allah. In Azim, for verily the tremor, the shaking, the vibration, the quake of that hour is a big thing. When the earth starts to shake. جَلَّ جَلَالُ الْمَلِكِ قَالَ سُبْحَانَ فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ نَفْخَةٌ وَاحِدَةٌ When the first trumpet is blown. وَحُمِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ وَالْجِبَالُ فَدُكَّتَ دَكَّةً وَاحِدَةٌ فَيَوْمَئِذٍ وَقَعَتِ الْوَاقِعَةٌ When the earth, you know like an explosion happens, you see the land rise a little bit as it responds to the vibration. The earth rises, and then Allah Rabbul Izza says, not just the flat earth, the mountains rise, and they are shaken one shake. And this is happening on earth, imagine the calamity. And mountains, the gigant, will fly around like pieces of scattered wool. And you look up, Qala Subhana, إِذَا السَّمَاءُ unshaqat, The heavens are starting to tear. Qala Subhana, إِذَا السَّمَاءُ unfatarat, When the heavens go, the colors go all crazy, like when, when silver is melting, or when oil falls in water. And then Qala Subhana, فَكَانَتْ أَبْوَابَ It falls like pieces of doors. And you look at the sun, إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ When the sun has gone dark, when the sun is wrapped up, Qala Subhana, وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدِرَتْ And when the stars lose their shine, when the stars start to fly around, everything in the heavens and earth is coming in utter ruin. And you look at the oceans. وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِّرَتْ And the oceans erupt. And then وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ سُجِّرَتْ and when the oceans explode, as in the waves will burst and then it will be on fire, like it will be an explosion, an ignition. And you don't need to be a rocket scientist. Water is made of H2O and there's oxygen and hydrogen. If they get separated, both flammable and explosive. So this is what happens. The creation changes, the mountains fly about, the earth is destroyed, buildings come crumbling down. Everything that you know is in utter ruin and it's the most catastrophic day in the existence of creation. And this is the first blow. And this is called the blow of destruction. And then comes the second blow. فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَسَعِقَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Now comes the blow of death. That whatever's in the heavens and earth must die now. So whoever's left of the creation in the heavens above and the earth below, everyone will be killed on this blow of the second trumpet. And... There are many ahadith, and there's one hadith which mentions the story that our Sheikh Siraj Wahaj explained, and Tabari mentions it, and Tabarani mentions it, and Bayhaqi mentions it. But min bab al al ilmiya, in the Sanad, there is Ismail ibn Rafi', and he is da'if. And in the Sanad is Muhammad ibn Ziyad, and he is considered majhul. So although the Ahl al ilm mention the hadith, but it isn't the strongest of a hadith. But nonetheless, great scholars have mentioned it. And they narrate the story where in the creation nothing is left. And the verse says, Illa ma sha Allah, except for what Allah wishes. As in there are people, their existence that are still alive. So they say this refers to the four grand angels, as in Jibreel, Mikael, Israfil, and Malakul Maut, and the Hamalatul Arsh. 
those that carry the throne of the Dhul Arsh al Majid. So Allah Rabbul Izza says, let Jibreel die. So Malak al Maut takes his ruh. And then Allah Rabbul Izza says, Man baqa, man baqiya min al khalaiqi ya Malak al Maut. Who was left from the creations, O Malak al Maut? So he says, No one except for me, Kail, Israfil. Hamalatul Arsh wa ana Abdul Dalil Baina Yadaik and I your humble servant. So he says, Iqbid Ruha Mikail, take the life of Mikail, and Mikail falls. And then Allah Rabbul Azza says, Who is left in the dominions? So he says, Ya Rab Israfil, the Hamalatul Arsh, and I your humble servant. So he says, Take the life of Israfil. So the blower of the trumpet falls. And then Allah Rabbul Izza says, take the life of the Hamalatul Arsh, those that carry the throne of the Dhul Arsh al Majid. And the Hamalatul Arsh fall. And then Allah Rabbul Izza says, who was left in the dominions of Malakul Maut? He says, no one except for this humble servant at your beck and call, Ya Rabb. So Allah Rabbul Izza says, Mut Ya Malakul Maut, die, O Malakul Maut. And he falls down. And there are some aqwal which he says in, had I known the difficulty of death, I wouldn't have volunteered to take the life of the living. And the qawl is da'if. So, everyone is dead. Nothing is left. And Abu Huraira says, for a period of 40. So they asked, Ya Abu Huraira, 40 days. He said, abayt. I didn't ask. So he, they said, 40 months. He said, abate. I withheld. I didn't ask the Prophet. So they said, 40 years. He said, abate. I didn't ask. And they are amidst the Ahlul Ilm, those who say it means 40 years. And my, and the take of the other of the Ahlul Ilm is, if Abu Huraira didn't know, no one else knows. He was the one that narrated the Hadith. And this is the Rajah. So for a period of 40, the length of which is with Allah Rabbul Izza, there is nothing in existence. And in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Rabbul Izza grabs the earth and scrolls up the heavens in his right. He scrolls up the heavens in his right. There's not enough time to explain the heavens to you. But look up at night, you will get a glimpse. He scrolls up the heavens and, and then Shaking it says, I am the king. And what he loved the Muslim. Aina al Jabbaroon. Aina al Mutakabbiroon. Where are the arrogant ones? Where are the proud ones? Where are the haughty ones? Ana al Malik. I am the king. Aina al Muluk al Ard. Where are the kings of this world? Where are you? Has two meanings. As in what happened to you? And second as in, where are you so you can meet your punishment now? And then the voice of the Dhul Arsh al-Majid. لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ Allah. لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدُ الْقَهَارِ To whom belongs the dominion today? Who is the owner of the heavens and earth today? And the same voice of the Dhul Arsh al-Majid, to Allah, the Lord of honor and grandeur. And then after a period of 40, Allah Rabbul Izza sends down water. And this water is like a sticky, gooey substance the word is tal and nawawi says it looks something like maniyur rijal like as it is sticky gooey type of substance you see it in the sci-fi movies where they come out of cloning machines there's this goo on them and subhanallah They've started cloning now, the Rasul said it then. And this substance, this water, this sticky, gooey substance falls on this earth. And through it and from it, 
Allah Rabbul Izza remakes the bodies of men, of the humans, under the grave, under the soil. It seeps through. And the hadith of the Prophet from the last bone on your spinal column, that last little one, there's an atom or so left. For every human, that's what remains. Science says so. From that, Allah Rabbul Izza remakes you. And you are made whole, but you're under the ground. You're under the earth, you're in the graves, you're dead. And then the Zul Arsh al Majid and Fa'al al Lima Yurid orders Israfil come up again, Israfil. So the blower of the trumpet is resurrected, he comes up. And then he tells him, blow again. And he blows again, Fa'idahum Qiyamu Yunzurun. They standing up and looking. How does it happen? Isma li qawlillahi ta'ala. Itha zulzilatil ardu zilzalaha. When the earth starts to shake. You know like you sieve. You filter. Itha zulzilatil ardu zilzalaha. Wa akhrajatil ardu athqalaha. Wa qala al insanu ma laha. Yawma idhin tuhadithu akhbaraha. بأن ربك أوحى لها يومئذ يصدر الناس أشتاتا ليروا أعمالهم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يرى ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يرى When the earth goes into shaking and brings out the heavy burden it was carrying as in the bodies of the billions that have come and went and they get resurrected and the land is a different land. The ground is white. The land is barren. It is flat. Flat, not as in our earth is flat. It is flat. The mountains have been shifted. قال سبحانه وَيَوْمَ نُسَيِّرُ الْجِبَالِ وَتَرَى الْأَرْضَ بَارِزَةً وَحَشَرْنَاهُمْ فَلَمْ نُغَادِرْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدًا The day where we remove the mountains and we resurrect them, they come back up. And how are they resurrected? The Prophet says, Hufatan, Uratan, Ghurula. Barefooted, naked, uncircumcised. Kama khalaqnakum awwala marra. Like the day you were first made in the first time. In your natural existence, Aisha said, Radiyallahu anha, the embodiment of haya, radiyallahu anha. She said, Ya Ras, and look at the concern. Ya Rasulullah, we are naked, the men will be naked. One day look at each other. So the Rasul said, Ya Aisha, the situation is much bigger than for people to look at each other. And people will be dif resurrected differently on the Maidan of Hashr. And as they come out of their graves, there is darkness. And you see some people, light surrounds them. So they come out of their graves in darkness. And some people, light surrounds them. Nuruhum yasa bayna aydihim wa bi Towards their right and in front of them is lit bright. And Ibn Mas'ud says in an Athar, the son of which is Sahih, he says, your light will depend on the amount of deeds you have put forth. Some people will come with huge light on the day of judgment. And some people's light will be enough just for themselves. And some people like a candle that turns on and off, like, a, like you see those little um, alarm clock things that the light goes on and off. There's a special word for it, but I don't know right now. Um, so, this uh, it's on the Maidan, on the plains, Ardul Mahshar. And some people are resurrected and they can't get up. Bellies have gone huge. They try to get up, it brings them back. They move right. They roll left, 
Allah Rabbul Izza says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ الرِّبَا لَا يَقُومُونَ إِلَّا كَمَّا يَقُومُ الَّذِي يَتَخَبَّطُهُ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنَ الْمَسْ Those that eat the money of riba, they won't be able to stand, except like the one that has been touched by the devil. They will grow like that. You will see another person, and kids are poking him and pushing him. And he ate their money, their wealth, they were orphans. And he wronged them. And this is their situation in the day of judgment. And the sun start, comes down. And subhanallah, I was looking at the research. The scientists say, if the sun goes through its last phases, it will go through an eruption. I think they call it a supernova, Mr. Khan. Allah bless you for being here. So the sun will expand to the extent that it swallows our moon and it happens within a few seconds. And it comes close to our planet without swallowing the planet. And the hadith of the Prophet, although this might not be correct, ta'wil for it, but the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, in the day of judgment, the sun comes a mile away from the heads of humankind. And humankind are in that heat and they start to sweat. So some stand in puddles of sweat up to their ankles, some to their knees, some to their waist, some to their shoulders. Some people are drowned in it. Based on the wrong that you have done. And how long will the day last? Qala subhana, fi yawmin kana miqdaru, khamsina alfa sana, 50,000 years. And Allah Rabbul Izzah says, Fasbir, Allah, Fasbir sabran jameela. Have good patience. 50,000 years. And you say, but I can't stand for two hours. The one that made you stand here, the one that made you be able to stand and walk will make you stand for 50,000 years. And humankind panic. Humankind panic. And the fear is immense. And the heat is unbearable. And the sweat is covering people. So in a hadith, long hadith, and it is in the Sahihain. They say, oh people, you see our situation. You know our calamity. You know what has befallen us. Let's go find someone to intercede on our behalf. To the Zul Arsh al-Majid and Fa'al al-Lima Yureed. So they say, let's go to our father Adam. So they go to Adam alayhi salam. And they say, yeah, Adam, you are the father of him humankind. You are the one that Allah made with his own hands. Make shafa'a, intercede. Ask Allah Rabbul Izzah to ease in this burden, to let qiyamah, let hisab start. We can't bear this anymore. So he says, I disobeyed Allah in eating from the tree. And the hadith is in Sahihain. Go to Nuh. So they go to Nuh. You are the first of the Rusul. You are the one that Allah said you were. You were in da'wah for 950 years. Intercede. You know our situation. Intercede. Intercede. Ask Allah, Rabbul Izza, to start the day of judgment. Start the reckoning. This weight has become unbearable. So he says, I made a dua against my people. And Allah, Rabbul Izza, might take me on that if I raise my voice. If I ask. So go to Ibrahim, he's the Khalil of Allah. So they come to Ibrahim, you are the Khalil of Allah. As in the, the one that Allah chose as a friend. Ibrahim And Allah chose Ibrahim as a friend. So they come to Ibrahim, or oh Ibrahim, you are the friend of Allah. You are the father of the prophets. So Ibrahim alayhi salam says, go to Musa. So they go to Musa alayhi salam. And Time is limited, so Musa alayhi salam sends them to Isa. And in the hadith, there's no record for what Isa alayhi salam has done. So Isa alayhi salam says, go to Muhammad. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. And there are other aqwals in which each of them say, nafsi, nafsi, my own self, my own self. I have no capacity for someone else, my own calamity. So they come to the Rasul. 
Sallallahu alayhi Muhammad, Wallahi had we knew what to fall in sajda from now till our death comes, just thanking Allah for making us of the ummah of Muhammad, it still wouldn't be sufficient. What an honor to be the ummah of the Habib. So they come to him, O Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi Muhammad. There's things going to my head, I want to say it, but time, time, time. So, they say, oh, Ya Muhammad, Allah Rabbul Izzah says, لِيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ Allah Rabbul Izzah has forgiven you. Your first and your last, everything is forgiven. Your slate is clean, Allah has guaranteed. And you are the seal of the prophets and the beloved of Allah Rabbul Izzah intercede. So he says, Ana lahu, ana lahu. I am for this, I am for this. So he says, I make sajda under the throne of the Zul Arsh al-Majid. And he says, Allah Rabbul Izzah puts in me, in my heart, praises that aren't known to me, and I will utter them, and it will please my Lord, and listen to the honor. And the day where Ibrahim says, Allah Rabbul Izzah is more angry than he has ever been, or ever will be. Musa says, Allah is more angry than he has ever been, or ever will be. Isa says, Allah is more angry than he has ever been, or ever will be. All the prophets are, so Muhammad comes with Allah, this is Allah Rabbul Izzah's anger. So the Rasul comes in sajda, and look at the love between the two. Allah Rabbul Izzah says, Irfa' ra'sak, Allah. Irfa' ra'sak, lift your head, O Muhammad. Rise out of sajda, sal tu'ta, ask it will be granted. Ishfa' to shaffa', intercede, it will be accepted. And he says, Allahumma ummati, ummati, O oh Allah, my ummah, my ummah. And in the hadith, the one that the, the sanad I just talked about, in that hadith he says, Ya Rabb, start the reckoning. So Allah Rabbul Izzah says, I will come and start the reckoning. وَإِنْ شِئْتَ فَقْرَأْ وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًّا صَفًّا وَجِيءَ يَوْمَئِذٍ بِجَهَنَّمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ وَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكْرَى The day where the angels start to pour down. So angels come down from the heavens, row after row, formation after formation, group after group, on the Ardul Mahshar, on this plain land. And then the Hamalatul Arsh come, such grand creation, eight of them. وَيَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ ثَمَانِيَةٍ Eight angels, so grand that humankind are mesmerized by them. So they say, are these our Lord? Is this Allah Rabbul Izzah? So the angels say, no. He will come in a manner befitting his majesty and at a period befitting his majesty and understand me and you cannot understand the creator. So as the Arabs say, فَكُلُّ مَا كَانَ بِبَالِكْ فَاللَّهُ بِخِلَافُ ذَلِكْ Whatever imaginations you have, Allah Rabbul Izzah is beyond that. So the angels come and mankind move towards the land or the place where they will stand before Allah Rabbul Izzah and will be made accountable for their deeds. And their books start to appear. Qala subhana wa وَوُضِعَ الْكِتَابِ فَتَرَى الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ وَيَقُولُونَ وَيَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَتَنَا يَا وَيْلَتَنَا مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا and their books are given to them. First he says, وَعُرِضُوا عَلَىٰ رَبِّكَ صَفَّا And they will be lined up one line. يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الرُّوحُ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ صَفَّا لَا يَتَكَلَّمُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَذِنَ لَهُ الرَّحْمَانُ وَقَالَ صَوَابًا There isn't a word being uttered. Straight line. 
The first utterance in the Day of Judgment is from Allah Rabbul Izza to our father Adam alayhi salam. And he says, Ya Adam. And, Adam, and then imagine the fear of the situation. And Jahannam has been brought, being pulled with 70,000 bridles, 70,000 chains trying to control it, and each chain being handled by 70,000 angels. And when Jahannam sees creations, it hisses towards them, angry because the Lord of Jahannam is angry. And then in this situation, Allah Rabbul Izza beckons Adam, Ya Adam. So Adam says, Labbayka wa sa'adayk wal khayru fi yadayk at your beck and call, Ya Rabb. All good is in your hands, Ya Rabb. So Allah Rabbul Izza says, separate the portion of hell from your children. So he says, Wa ma ba'athu nar Ya Rabb. And what is the portion of hell? So Allah Rabbul Izza says, Min kulli alfin tis'umata tis'um wa tis'un. From every thousand, nine hundred and ninety-nine for the fire. And as the utterance comes, the hair on the head of babies will grow gray. Qala subhana, fakayfa tattaquna in kafartum yawman yaj'alul buldan ashiba. And how will you fare the day that you have belied the day the hair on the head of babies will grow gray? And on this day, on this hot day, I will end with this insha'Allah ta'ala. There were seven groups of people who are in a comfortable situation. They're in a comfortable situation because there's an overlap in the subject, so I don't want to take the thunder out of the sheikh's light. Uh, so, the seven categories of people under the shade of the Tul Arsh al Majid, under the shade of the throne of Allah Rabbul Izzah. Sabatun yudillohum Allahu fi dille, yawmala dilla illa dillo, wala bakin illa wajha. The first one, Imamun Adil, a righteous ruler, a just ruler. And he is a person that lived, and how rare is justice these days, Muslims? Look around you at the Muslim, at all lands, and then look around you at the Muslim lands. Three, five thousand people shot, sniper killed, why? They didn't listen to my command. They wanted a legitimate government. Justice has disappeared. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, Imamun Adil. And then, Shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillah, a young man and youngsters listen with a golden opportunity to have been brought up on the obedience and on the ibadah of Allah Rabbul Izza. From this young age, you're in the ibadah of Allah Rabbul Izza. And then a person, da'athum ra'atan zata mansibin wa jamal faqal inni akhafullah. A lady of elegance and status, beauty and class, calls him, you know, invites him to haram and he says, I fear Allah Rabbul Izza. And rajulani tahaba fillah, and two people, two believers who love each other for Allah's sake. They come together on that love and they part on that love. And a person who gives sadaqah with his right in such secrecy and without such fuss that the left doesn't know he gave sadaqah. You know, some people give a dollar and subhanallah, he's done a selfie with it, you know, like this. <laughs> I have given a dollar. Puts a post on it, I have given a dollar. You know, subhanallah. Um, I don't want to brag, but I gave a dollar. Um, and, but, and although talking about sadaqah, is, there is jawaz for it in deen, but the ideal is to give it in a way where the right, left doesn't know what the right has done. And a man who remembers Allah in seclusion in his eyes tear. This seven group of people will be under the shade of Allah Rabbul Izza. The day where there is no shade but the shade of Allah Rabbul Izza. Pray, O oh Muslims, let's make today a day where we decide, khalas. Don't, you know, Umar radiallahu anhu says what happened yesterday is too far gone. You can't do anything about it except for tawbah and istighfar. So yesterday is gone. Today we say, Allah Rabbul Izzah gave us a two-day detox. So after today, I will be a different person. Ya Rabb, make us different people, good people after today, Ya Rabb. And make us of these seven. That the day where there is no shade, we are under the shade of your throne, Ya Rabb. And may Allah Rabbul Izzah guide you and guard you and bless you and protect you. 
وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته